Hi, I'm Colin and welcome to How to Paint Watercolour. So if you're ready, we'll get started and we'll paint this one. Hello YouTubers and welcome back to How to Paint Watercolours with me, Colin. I've painted this one before but I've changed it slightly. Uh, I want to do something different with it. I want to add a mountain in the back, take away the trees um, and definitely change the colours. So I'd like to say a big hello to all my new subscribers and a big hello to all my regular subscribers. Thank you for staying with me for such a long time. And I'm just leaving a thin film of water on the paper. I want to create a bright spot in the sky which will allow these trees to stand out. So I'm going to put some lemon yellow in here and I've also got some masking fluid on some of the tree trunks and tops of the dry stone walls uh, just to keep them clean and bright. Bringing it into the mountain over the back fields. Maples yellow over the mountain into the back fields as well. Some of the lemon yellow around here creates a bright spot. bits of colour in. These are Ken Bromley's own uh, brand paints. Terrific value for money. Terrific paints. Bring it into the wall. Doesn't matter because it stops the wall separating from the ground and stops them making it look like they've been stuck on. It's really in blue. This is cerulean blue and burnt umber. Just making a grey. Adding it to where the yellow is in the sky. Bring some in here as well. French ultramarine and burnt umber. Just down here. Does it matter if it turns green here? one or two areas up in the sky just to create some interest and with a piece of kitchen roll I'm just going to take the tops of these out slightly This is a very light pressure, very light. Just creating some slight texture. And then we're going to leave that to dry. Okay, now that's dried and you can see that's made for an interesting sky, nice and soft. Now I'm just gonna re-wet the whole of the mountain area and being as you've allowed the paint to dry, it won't smudge. But if it smudges, it doesn't really matter. The underlying wash will show through. Even though it can look a complicated picture, if you take it uh, section by section, you'll get it right. And as you progress, you will be able to go from one part of the picture to another without allowing it to dry. But I think sometimes it's easier when you're starting off to do it this way. So I'm gonna take some of the sky color, cerulean blue and burnt umber, transfer it into my little pot there. And I'm just going to darken it slightly with just a touch more burnt umber, just to send it down a bit, a little bit more water with it, just to make it more of a blue grain, but quite watery, because your blues colours they will recede, and we'll just edge this in, allowing it to flow. Don't play with it. Resist the temptation to start playing. Getting a few directional strokes. This one here I want to be really pale and allow all the, the paint to run out so you can barely see it. Your mountain take on its shape. And then I just want to do some of the French ultramarine and burnt umber from the sky, making sure it's well mixed. And just bring out one or two little areas. Not many. If you bring the one or two areas you want out that are dark next to a light patch, it can really make it stand out. And I want to separate this mountain from the back one. And taking the tip of the brush that's been cleaned and wiped off with your fingers, 
Should use a cloth really, but you know, you get lazy as you get older. I'm just going to soften that in. Just re wet gently the bottom field, or the, this little meadow in the back. Cerulean blue and burnt umber, just once again along the top line. And with it being wet, you will get a soft line instead of a hard edge. Pull it down in the direction that you want it to fall in the land. Keeping it pale towards the house because you want the house to stand out. Some of the darker French ultramarine and where you've got some of the walls blanked out with uh, masking fluid, just add a little around that area because when we put the capping stones on in white this will help it stand out. Don't want to go too dark. Just going to leave that to dry. Now that your mountains and your back meadow is dry, I'm going to come to the farmhouse or the little cottage. I'm just going to put the roof in. This is a, a little bit of Naples yellow. I want to drop some of the cerulean blue and burnt umber from the sky. Just allowing this to drift. Prince Ultramarine and burnt umber. I just want to darken it. Some of it here. This is also from the sky. Next to the yellow, you see how it stands out. Straightforward French ultramarine and burnt umber, but mixed up to a real deep dark colour. This one it will be slightly in the shade. Window frame and the shadow sides of the door, and maybe just the odd window frame, uh, sorry, window pane. Come to your dry stone wall, just going to re-wet that. So that's some Naples yellow, just drop the colour in. Once again some of the sky colour, cerulean blue and burnt umber. Marine and burnt umber. This is the sky colours. It all unifies the, the painting, the use of the same colour. Now I'm going to add a little bit of murky green. This is the cerulean blue and just pull it this way for you. Cerulean blue and burnt umber, and all you do to it is add the lemon yellow in, very tiny amount that you put in the sky over here, and this will automatically give you your green. Then if it's a bit bright, you can just adjust it with the burnt umber. I'm bringing it down into the grass so that the wall becomes part of the landscape. Don't worry about it, just allow it to bleed down. A little bit of my kitchen roll again. You can if you want to, just take out or fade out one or two areas. That's all I want to do with that, and then we're going to let this dry. It's all nice and dry. I've just removed the masking fluid, so what we're going to do now is we'll put one or two bits and pieces in cerulean blue and burnt umber. I'm going to drop into that some French ultramarine and burnt umber, which is the very dark one. I'm just picking the side and just Drifting it in, darkening up one edge just to make it look a little more three dimensional. It starts to pick out some stones and some cracks in the walls. You could make these cracks multi coloured, but I'm just using a, a straightforward colour just for speed. Bring too much detail out towards the edge of the painting, otherwise it will lead your eye out and uh, 
and you don't want to do that, you want to keep your vision within the painting. one or two light areas and just ring them and turn them into the dry stone wall look that they have. The edge of this building out. Getting some Naples yellow once again. Making that colour up by dragging some of the ultramarine and burnt umber into it. to stand out. Taking a fine detail brush, just touching in a little stronger colour. Just applying a shadow under the eave. Maybe one or two indication of roof tiles. go wild with this, just an indication, just adds more interest. That's all I want to do with that really, come around to the trees, Naples yellow, just up the tree trunks. I'll drop some French ultramarine and burnt umber into this, quite strong. And I just want to bring it down the two edges really and just allow it to come together. I want some of the Naples yellow to show through. I want it to stand out strongly against the mountain in the background. any leaves on these trees as it's probably coming into winter but there'll be lots of branches which will make up for it. Just indicate where the branches are going to start and go to. Just checking the depth of colour. Back to my posts again. Just picking one or two areas out that I want to redefine. Make sure that this is virtually dry before you do this. Just going to rotate my picture while we put the trees in. This just makes it easier. Start to pull your trees out. If you put tops of your trees in and then your bottom branch, you can then judge how far to bring the rest of the branches out and it will give you a really good guide. Cheers. Always get them spiky ones along the dry stone walls. Once again, just turning it round. You bring your 
branches through, through the field and into the mountain, you actually are helping to break the, paper, uh, the painting up so that you don't, it all merges together and nothing seems to be separated, making the painting one whole thing rather than something bits and pieces stuck on. See how the trees come from the wall, from behind the wall, through the mountain and into the sky. It's the same thing, you don't stop it uh, halfway into the mountain, you just keep it going. And it brings all three pieces together, if that makes sense. Bit of stonework. Drop a little shadow under there. Marine and umber, very watery. It'd be nice sometimes just to add a little red into your painting, so maybe a red door could be a bit bright, but okay. Sort of darkening with a bit of um, sky colour. I can take a little bit of paint out from the bottom of the door so it doesn't look like it's been blocked in and it it looks like it's fading as it's coming towards the ground. And then we're going to leave this to dry and then we'll put the foreground in. Okay, everything's nice and dry now, so we'll come to the foreground. I'm just going to take some clean water and all along the foreground, I'm just going to re-wet it. Just enough water on so the paint will flow. Lemon yellow once again. And I'm going to take some of the grey green, which is the cerulean blue, burnt umber, and lemon yellow. Start to bring it in. Bring it through the lemon yellow, just to dull it slightly. Dark around the edges to help focus your eye in. Then salt marine, burnt umber, and lemon yellow. For an even darker green. Very earthy. So bring it in. But I also want to bring in some grey as well from the sky. Cerulean blue, burnt umber. Give my arm. And Schultz Marine and burnt umber. A bit strong in the foreground. This will help create the recession to force everything back. Soften the grass into the wall with a damp brush. And it just helps bring it all together. You see how the wall starts to disappear into the grass. Allowing the colour to creep up into the wall and just softening it out. I'm not going to put a figure in it really. You can use any of your dark colour. Maybe we'll just drop a little bit of red into him, a bit of Venetian red, just to add a little bit of colour. Just want to add one or two rocks, so I'm just going to paint them in and scrape a couple out, and we'll see what happens. of the grass. I don't want to put a great deal in it, it's, it's just there for added interest in the foreground. And maybe the odd blade of grass next to them. I also think I could do with a little bit of shadow that's been thrown in from the fence. The wall. This is just a bit of French salt marine and burnt umber and it's well watered down. Shadow from the tree. From the house. 
valves. Get around to the good bits. This is where you get to sign it, mount it and frame it. <clears throat> I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please click the like button and subscribe. All subscribers are welcome. I'll leave a link in the description box to the rest of the videos I've made for YouTube, should you wish to take a look. Birds in. And a link in the description box where you can find Ken Bromley's own watercolour paints, should you wish to take a look at them. And so once again, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. Thank you.